All right, everyone joining us this morning, the latest winner on the NASCAR Cup Series, driver of the number two discount tire. Sometimes it's Freightliner, sometimes it's Menard, but it's the Team Penske, driver of the number two Team Penske Ford Mustang Dark Horse in the Cup Series, Austin Sindrick joining us this morning. Austin, congratulations on the big win Sunday. I know you guys getting ready to celebrate maybe a little bit today. Just kind of what's it been like the last couple of days to enjoy this win? Yeah, it's it's been great. Obviously, um, short turnaround, you know, probably shorter than most weeks with Sonoma cars having to leave um, this morning. So uh, my guys, uh, I just didn't really have a have much time to to, to turn around and, and you know we had, we had to do the 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 whole car yesterday. So um, we we got all the families of, of all the guys on my team together, pit crew, road crew, and uh, went out and had dinner last night and um, went and did the. The wind donuts that I uh, traditionally would do at Roush H, it's just been a while. Um, went to the engine shop this morning. We'll have our happy hour as a team uh, during during lunch today. Um, so, yeah, all, all great things. There's definitely still a pulse on it. It's a pretty pretty big moment for, for us and uh, a lot of momentum for the team. Awesome. Well, we got a good group here on the call here today. So if you've got a question for Austin, raise your hand or send it to me through the chat, and uh, we'll ask as many questions as we can with the time we have with Austin. So let's kick it off here with Greg Engel. Go ahead, Greg, you're on the poll. Kick us off. Good morning, sir. And morning. good morning, sir. Uh, congratulations on the win. Really cool. Uh, really, really popular win. Um, Brian Wilson seemed to indicate Sunday night, and Brian Wilson, no relation to the Beach Boys, um, says, was talking about how, how the crew chiefs get together during the week and kind of plan and strategize the upcoming race and in – Sunday, uh, you guys stayed out uh, when everybody else pitted, and it put you guys, uh, you know, in the top three. Did you know about that strategy coming into this, or do you just kind of do whatever he says? At the end of the day, I do whatever he says. I mean, I feel like we have a good enough relationship that if I have if I have input, I'll, I'll give it. But otherwise, you know, he's he's the one that's dealing with all the information as far as um, seeing it all in real time as it's happening. You know, and I feel like a turning point in that race was some of those cars staying out on those really old tires, being able to still make somewhat competitive lap time, or at least make it hard for guys with four tires to go by. And I, I really feel like that, um, you know, somewhat diverted some of our strategy to, to maybe something more aggressive um, as, as to what we did. Obviously we, we, we only stopped a handful of times in the race. So, I uh, mean, we, we had good enough cars to do so either. I didn't have a whole lot of fall off or a whole lot of balanced migration throughout the run. So car was super predictable and um, just, just opens up a lot of, a lot of windows and, uh, I felt like we had a we had a top three car, and, and, and I felt like our strategy was was top tier as well. You you get into this routine. Speaking of meetings, and you come in every week, and okay, let's analyze the last race. What's the feeling like coming into these meetings for this week as the latest winner? Uh, it's no different. Um, you know, I feel like this week's unique because you know, Sonoma's got to repave and, and, you know, there's a lot of unknowns with that. So it's, you know, how do you gather as much information as much data, how much, how, how relevant is the information, the data that you have on Sonoma towards what you're doing? And then how do you utilize the 50 minute practice session in an efficient way? So very much, uh, you know, to, and when it comes to the process in, in, in the relation to, to winning the race, you know, um, yeah, I think it makes our gateway debrief somewhat shorter than maybe a, a more difficult race as far as like, hey, what do I want for next time? You know, I, we had a super competitive car and kind of just looking for, for small knobs to make, to make that even better and kind of go over why things went well, you know, versus, you know, last year, previous events, other cars in the field, you know, definitely make good notes, you know, because you want to be able to come back there and, and, and do that all again as a team. Um, but, uh, as far as the process itself, um, you know, winning and, and, and running that well, um, it's, it's a validation of, of the process that we've put together as a team if we're able to put, you know, a fast car on the racetrack, make the right decisions in the race car. Um, you know, that, that, that is enough for us to be, um, at, at, at the top, at the top level, um, on, on, on a good day. Well, here's, uh, hoping that you have many more short meetings this season, my friend. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Have fun this weekend at Sonoma. Appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. Let's go to John Newby. Hello, John. Hello. Thank you. Austin, I was kind of curious about with looking at you and, you know, SVG guys like that. Why is it that you're so able to, I mean, naturally achieve success on road courses? I know obviously the background plays a role in where you came from, but is there, you know, other factors? Like, do you see the route better than other drivers? Uh, it's hard to say, and I feel like track to track, it, it certainly changes. Um, you know, I feel like 
Sonoma and Watkins Glen are, are probably two of the hardest road course races to go into as a, as a new guy, right? I mean, there's so many laps, so much experience from, you know, kind of just the traditional cup series field of drivers. Uh, but otherwise, man, I think the game's honestly changed um, in the last five or six years when it comes to road course racing, there's been, you know, a lot more races on the schedule and a lot more guys have put much more of an emphasis on, on their preparation and, and, and how to go about that the right way to be prepared to, to compete at a high level of those races. You know, obviously you get a street course and a guy like SVG comes in, who's an absolute stud and, it's no surprise that he, he, he ran extremely well and, and, and had a shot to win the race. Um, so I, I think as far as it relates to me, um, you know, in the cup series, you know, I would say, I'd say 2021 with the older car was, was probably a little bit better for, for me on the road courses than, than the next gen car. You know, I feel like we've, we've had some good races, but we haven't had great races. And, you know, I, I feel like in some ways that's somewhat of the expectation, but, um, I feel like you can never underestimate your competition. There's there's some pretty talented guys in the field, and um, it, it's, it's definitely hard to separate yourself. Gotcha. And then just one quick follow-up. I know that the Xfinity program, Penske, has been kind of dormant the last couple of years. As a driver, is that something you would ever want to see come back, especially with NASCAR adding you know, more unique tracks to the schedule, like putting Sonoma back on the Xfinity thing for the first time? Yeah. Um... I think from a from a team standpoint, you know, we, we have we have certainly found um, different ways to to continue to add depth to the race team. That's what the Xfinity program really is for. Whether if it's developing drivers, developing crew members, developing pit crew athletes, um, you know, that's that's what those programs are really good for. Um, but, but obviously from, from my perspective, driving on the racetrack, it's 50, 50 for me. I feel like some guys might feel differently. Um, but for, for me, when I did double duty races in 2021, it was really difficult. Um, just because, and, and even then with the cars being as similar as they were, whereas right now they're not very similar at all. I mean, you listen to Chase Elliott talk about how, how different that Xfinity car felt for him, you know, after years of not running that style of car. Um, I feel like it's very much the case and, and in 2021, when I, when I did double duty races, like, I don't know, I just, I put everything into my racing and my preparation. And like, I was exhausted on some of those weekends just because like, I want to get hundred percent out of it. And uh, I, I don't want to leave anything on the table and um, you know, with, with as many different people and as much as, you know, at least for my process, it was, it was certainly a lot. Um, so uh, I definitely wouldn't want it to be a distraction. Um, but I also wouldn't want to not maximize an opportunity in a really good car. Um, so yeah, I would say I'm, I'm probably 50, 50 on that. I would say I'm probably on the lower end of, of, of guys that would want more, more track time, but, uh, otherwise, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of whatever you're prioritizing really at the moment. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for the insight. Thank you. Hey, John, let's move on to Stuart Weber. Good morning, Stuart. And good morning. Hey, Austin, I'm here in uh, Northeast Florida, and we often think back to your win at Daytona in 2022 and just the big celebration, Air Force Thunderbirds, all that kind of stuff that came along with it. For you, over these last two years, how often have you kind of thought back to that day and being able to finally get back to one of those kind of celebrations again this weekend? How meaningful was that? Yeah, definitely meaningful. Obviously, a, a very, a very different um, type of celebration. Not, not necessarily. I mean, get the races out of, out of the picture. Just kind of the timing of, you know, in my career. Obviously, very early on in the Cup Series, that I think both wins. You know, I wouldn't say came at a surprise, but I definitely wasn't the favorite going into the race by any means for for either of them. Um, but you know, I, I think what what makes this past weekend special is just. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, I feel like um, with, with with the group of guys that I'm with and the the team that I'm with, it's it's kind of a different experience in general. Like one of the coolest things about winning the Daytona 500 was a lot of my guys on the team uh, on, on the two car at that time, you know, had, had been trying to win that race for, for decades um, and to be able to deliver that to those guys and, and and to see that kind of joy. And then on the flip side, you know, this weekend, there's a lot of guys on my on my car that that was their first ever Cup Series win. Um, and, and to be able to deliver that, it's it's and and I know I'm referencing in relation to like how other people are experiencing it. But um, it, it is what what makes this this special for me. Like I, I said it after Daytona and I'll say it again, like I know what winning means for me. I know the 
the excitement, the relief, the satisfaction that comes with, with, with that um, for, for me, Austin Sindrick, but um, to kind of see what it means for, for other people that obviously, you know, I get to see often, but um, never get to see that excited often uh, is, uh, is pretty special for me. I guess it really kind of speaks to just how hard it is to win in NASCAR uh, to kind of go that, that long stretch. It probably makes you appreciate them even more, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely. It's uh, definitely worth, uh, worth soaking up every moment. Thank you, Austin. Thank you. Let's move to Kelly Crandall. Hey, little Kelly. Hey, Dan. Um, Austin, two things for you. You you had said Sunday night in your winner's press conference about how excited you were to see everybody at the shop and just the support that you've gotten from everyone at Penske over the last two years with how rocky things have been. Can you share more about that, what that's meant to you, what that's felt like, or, or what stands out about um, maybe things people have said or just how you have felt that support? through these last few seasons? Yeah, I mean, I certainly spend a lot of time at the race shop. So, you know, shop-based guys are pretty used to seeing me, whether if it's just walking, you know, through the facility, going to the gym every day or, um, or, or obviously being around the car and being around the team, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a community of people that, that you know, put a lot of work in and obviously don't, don't get to see the other side at, at the racetrack, but um, it, it's just, you know, it, it's just appreciated. Like I, I don't, I don't expect, you know, anyone to, to be excited or, you know, happy about, you know, a, a, a poor performance or anything like that. And I don't think anyone is, but um, the, the, the support that I've received from, from the team, from, from the top to the bottom um, throughout this, this stretch of 85 races, if you want to call it um, has been, has been unwavering. Um, and, and, you know, I've always been a person that says, you know, other people's opinions don't matter, but the people that are putting in the hard work, and, and that are part of my team, you know, those are the only opinions to me that, that matter. And um, to, to have, to have that support, even, even through the tough times, it, it shows the type of character, the, the, the people that work here and, and, and to have that belief in me and um, is, is, is awesome. Um, and it's, it's appreciated and um, it, it doesn't go unnoticed by me and it's, it's definitely a motivator. And something uh, that I think it was Walt had said that in, in his press conference was about how through all of this that you haven't lost your passion for racing. You're still as dedicated as ever, passionate as ever. For you, what has it been like these last couple of years just learning to race at the cup level, go through these ups and downs and not lose that fire? Know that you have the talent, you have the people, but kind of grow along the way. What has that been like for you? And that's exactly what it is. It's, it's, it's growth. It's, you know, you're, you're trying to find the next level yourself. I mean, you move up from the Xfinity series to cup series, you see it in other professional sports with, you know, I, I watch a lot of football. You see it with college players going into the NFL, you know, that, that performance can or cannot translate depending on how you adapt. And, and, and the cup series field is extremely talented and, and to be able to separate yourself, you know, in, in, in today's day and age um, is, is more of a challenge probably than ever, um, you know, in, in some ways, but, but otherwise, um, you know, I, I want it, I want to be on that level. Like I want that challenge. I don't want to just be satisfied with, with what I've done. It's, it's, you know, how do you take advantage of the opportunity that you have? Because that's, that's, that's all that really, it's all, all it really comes down to. Um, so whether if that's defining my, you know, process throughout the week or with my guys or what I look at or what's important or how do I utilize my teammates as resources? Um, you know, all, all of the things that, that make cup series racing different than, than what I've done in the Xfinity and, and the truck series and any other type of racing that I've done, you know, how do I, how do I adapt to that with the things that not necessarily I'm comfortable with? Cause I, I think you have to find yourself uncomfortable. You have to have difficult conversations with, with, with the people that matter. Um, but, but how do you, you love, performance because if you're just reinventing the wheel to reinvent the wheel because you don't feel good about how things are going um you got to do everything with a purpose and, and and i feel like i've i've turned over a lot of stones to uh to, to get to where we're, we're seeing some progress with with me and, and, and my group and um you know it's it's that's that's what it takes i think thank you okay let's move on to deandra good morning Good morning, Austin, and thank you for taking the time. I have a two-part question, which is about your work in the television commentary booth. 
So the first part is what, if anything, do you learn being in the booth that you are not learning being on the track? And the second one is whose idea was the bow tie? All right. Um, so as far as the, on, on the on the broadcast booth side, um, I, I certainly enjoy it. I, I would say like being in the booth, it's definitely been my, my favorite role that I've been assigned. Like I've done the pit crew, I've done or pit road, I've done the 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 studio and I've done the booth and the booth is definitely the most fun because it's like live sports. Like that's how you have to consume sports is live. That's why that's like half the reason I feel like we have live television still is because of live sports and, and to be part of that live action and, you know, talk about things as they're happening um, is a lot of fun. And, and I really enjoy that. Um, and I enjoy watching that. Um, so that, that part for me has been fun. Um, you know, I've watched a lot of races from uh, the spotter stand. Um, and I'd say that's a pretty similar experience for, for me as far as like what I can see. Um, so I, I do find that very valuable. Um, and as far as the bow tie, uh, I have always not cared about being a little bit different. Um, but I probably got a bow tie before this, but it definitely solidified the deal. When I was in band class, I played the tuba and a regular tie was going to get in the way of like playing all the notes and like picking the thing up and down and like not pulling on your neck. Um, so I wore a bow tie and um, really ever since uh, that's pretty much, that's pretty much all I've ever owned. So um, it's, it's funny because it's just kind of just enough out of the norm that literally everybody picks up on it and um, asks me about it. And it's, it's definitely become a thing. Um, so uh, it's uh, I, I guess it's fun. It's fun to do something a little different. It's a good look with the glasses. It's very erudite. Thank you. Thank you. You know, lesson on how to tie a bow tie. Personally, I've been, I don't know how to tie an actual bow tie. It's pretty easy, it. Dan. It's like tying a shoe. It's actually easier than a regular tie. I promise you. Well, maybe one day we'll come. I'll come to the coach the next formal event I have and give me a lesson. We'll figure it out. All right, great. Let's go to Dustin Long. Hey, Dusty. Hey, thanks. Um, couple things. Hey, Austin, you talked about on Sunday after the race about, you know, it's not good enough just to be top 10 at Penske. And, and look, I understand to be an athlete in your position, you have to have a singular focus and a, a singular drive. But I'm curious uh, um, from the mental aspect of it, where does that, how do you prevent that from being destructive to where that is so all consuming? And again, I understand it has to be to some degree, but how something like that, what you've gone through, doesn't tear you down, break you down, or maybe it did and you learned from it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it depends on the day, whether if it's breaking me down or not. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly just, it's, it's how, how do you, how do you react and adapt to, to adversity? I mean, I think that's, you know, I think that's what, what really high performance is all about in, you know, whether if adversity is at a really low or, or, you know, someone's, my, someone's adversity could be at my high, you know, and, and, and trying to define that and move that bar up, I, I think is what it's all about. You know, I've, I've always felt like I've been a, a pretty mentally, um, you know, I've had to, I've heard to learn a lot in a short amount of time in a lot of different situations in race cars. And I worked with a ton of different people. Uh, I feel like I'm a pretty adaptable person in a lot of ways, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's what it takes. Um, and, and um, past that, I, I don't, I don't think there's a right or wrong way of how to do it. Everybody's experiences are different. Um, but, uh, how bad do you want it? It's really all it boils down to and, and how important is it to you? And, um, I, I think I alluded to on, on Sunday that this is by far the most important thing that I have going on and it's how I want it. And I want to check and I was trying to go back through your history and obviously, you know, last year not winning, but I was thinking the only other time you had won in about the, since 2015 would have been the, your 2018 Xfinity rookie season. And I couldn't find if you ran any other race or anything else then. So if that's the case, you only had two years in about a, an eight, nine, 10 year period where you didn't win. Um, I know you were talking a little bit about it. what is the adjustment in, in terms of not winning and I don't know if it's resetting goals or just understanding where you are and, and, and looking at it that way, because obviously there's so much focus on winning, but there's so many other things that can be accomplished each weekend. Yeah, I, I think you bring up a great point that made uh, 2023 pretty difficult for me is the just numbers on the board. Like that is to your point, that is the first year since 2011 that I haven't won a race. 
it's a long time. <laughs> That's a really long time. Um, and, and whether it's just one or two a year or, or, or multiple or whatever it is, you know, I, I do a, actually commission artwork every year um, to, to send out to all my supporters, family and friends. It's kind of a collage of all the race cars I drove. I, I started back in 2015 when I was racing in IMSA and rallycross and stock cars and like kind of just to illustrate literally the, the different experiences I, I got to do throughout the year. And uh, usually the centerpiece of this artwork is the most prominent race when I have. And last year, I, I mean, I called my guy, Steve. I'm like, dude, I don't even know what to do. Like, I, this is a tradition. Like everybody expects this every year. Like, and I want to do this and I want to have these to like line them up, you know, throughout my career. But like, I don't even know what to put at the center of this. Like there was, there was I, I did the Bristol dirt race because it was just different and it was going away. So <laughs> we put a dirt, a dirt NASCAR cup car. Cause that's as weird as last year felt for me. And, and, and that's just what we did. Um, cause I ran well in the heat race. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I got. So, um, you know, it's it, from a goal setting standpoint, look, I mean, I don't, I didn't expect to get into the cup series and, and go out here and win a ton of races right away against, you know, some guys have been doing this for, for, for over a decade. You know, I, I'm, I'm definitely a realistic person, but, um, I definitely expect myself and, 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 and the level in which I prepare for these races, you know, I'd say the hardest thing over the last handful of years for me to do. And it's a self, a lot of, it's like a weekly self check for me because there's a different way to prepare for a race to prepare. If you're going to run from 10th to 25th versus 10th to first, whether if that's studying restarts, how different drivers drive, what decisions to make in traffic, you know, those are the types of things that my, my preparation has to have to, there's, it's been a much wider spectrum of preparation because the racing is so, different throughout the cup series field. I mean, this past weekend, I didn't, there were cars that raced that race that I never saw the entire weekend. Usually I see the entire field <laughs> at some point or the other. And, and it's been difficult for me uh, going into race weekends to convince myself that I need to prepare to watch every single restart of how to win every single restart in every scenario, the same way that I would going into every single Xfinity series race going into the race, knowing that, you know what, I'm probably not, there's a chance I'm not going to be racing for the win here, but I need to be ready for that opportunity. And, and there are weeks where you're finishing 25th, three weeks in a row where it's, you know, hard to sit here and realistically think that you'll just go in there and, you know, need to use this information. Um, but it's about, some of it's just about not being lazy. Um, but, and, and that's how you have to challenge yourself because like, it's kind of depressing watching some of those things, thinking that you're, you're not going to have to use it, um, but it's 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 necessary, and, that, and that's the mindset that I've that I've forced myself to have is 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 the, be prepared for those moments, and um, that this this weekend is is honestly proof of that proof of that process for not just me but my team. You know that's that's what I feel like I project onto my race team is 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 to be prepared for that. Know that that we have that opportunity, and, and it's good to be surrounded by whether if that's you know two championship you know teams, you know, right next door to our setup plate, uh, or, or, or even an IndyCar program or an IMSA program. Like we have enough greatness surrounding us to know that we have all those ingredients, you know, obviously it hasn't been the best year for, for our cup program as, as a whole, but, um, you, you, you have to be ready for those opportunities and, 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 and do what is necessary to, to, to take advantage of that. And I want to ask you one other thing, and I did see. Thanks, Dan. I saw that the 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 artwork that you had done. Dan showed yeah. that earlier uh, yeah. from this past season. But I, it's you, you as you talk about, maybe think about in terms of basketball, and we hear about like gym rats, the you know sons of coaches who grow up around the game and have like a, a different understanding or different motivation. And do you, as you talk about, you know, studying? restart studying different things and as opposed to if you're going to be a winning driver even if you're running 25th and i'm just wondering if it's as much the osmosis or, or just being around team penske and the drivers and you know kind of maybe this is kind of your racing version of being a gym rat of what you kind of picked up even with you you didn't necessarily know it but seeing what these drivers have done when you were younger do you get that sense or do you feel like how much that has helped guide it because certainly like i said i think the mental aspect is is very interesting because like i think it could easily tear a young driver down 
And you've been able to kind of, at least at this point, seem like overcome that or survive in that sense. And I'm just wondering how much of that Penske background and being around all the success through the years is, is maybe kind of filtered down in a way. Uh, I mean, I, I certainly think that my my expectation for myself and 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 the people around me, the people that I work with, is is absolutely that. Um, you know, I, I ask a lot of the people that I work with, and I ask a lot of myself. And I, I do feel like it's you know I don't know anything different when it comes to to performance and and how to get the most you know out, out of every opportunity. Um, other than what I know, and what I know is 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 what happens at Team Penske. You know, what, no other way around it, really. I don't I don't have any exposure to anything else, and that mentality has helped me in other forms of racing outside of you know racing for Team Penske. But but it is absolutely the the mentality that that, that and the culture that that flows through the shop. So uh, from that perspective, yes, absolutely. I would, you know, there's no way I can disagree with you. Um, and but at, at the same time talking about i mean everyone has bad days but i definitely don't want to define myself as a 25th place driver you know as i as i talk about all this because i know that's what i'm not um and and i know that i bring a lot more to the table with, with that but um you know the, those 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 weeks are, are definitely the, the toughest but because you know i know that with with what i do and and and, and what we do as a team um so it, it's it's difficult to uh to, to try and overcome that some days. Thank you for explaining that. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, Austin, I know you've got to run here at 10. I want to try to squeeze in Trey Downey real quick because I'm sure he's probably got a question about next week. So, Trey, go ahead and ask your question, and then we'll have to let Austin go. Hey, Austin, just want to look look ahead to the month upcoming. Um, have you seen the pictures of the repave in three and four in Iowa? And uh, if so, how do you think that will change the racing there? Uh, I actually haven't uh, seen seen the photos of the repave in Iowa. Um, I know they're going to pave over the the patchwork in, in, in three and four that's been there for a little while. Um, so obviously new pavement is going to going to have grip and you're going to have to run through it. Um, I think it all just kind of depends on how wide it is. You know, even at North Wilkesboro last year, you know, that's an extreme example with an extremely old surface. Um, you, you would you would put your tire literally on the freshest piece of asphalt and that would be the racing line no matter what you know track shape or geometry would tell you is the correct racing line it's it's where the grip is so um you know i, I would be i wouldn't be surprised if if you know if it becomes a favored spot on the racetrack um just due to that um but but otherwise uh you know i think we're all really excited about going to iowa thank you all right, Austin, I, I appreciate you taking the time. I know it's busy. You got a lot going on there today. The trophy looks good behind you. The, the champagne bottle looks good. I don't know if it's been, you know, if it's still full. You've still got some celebrating to do with that, but it looks good. And I uh, wish you the best of luck this weekend at Sonoma. Cool. Thanks. Appreciate y'all. Right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate the time. So All right, there's the checkered flag. Great job, driver.